This instructional video will show you how to mount the KBMS 35 frameless parts set to the demonstration unit. First, it should be understood that the magnets located on the rotor assembly are fully charged and will have a very strong attractive force with ferrous materials. Keep all tools and parts away from the rotor during assembly. Be sure to use the jack screw when mounting and removing the rotor assembly. Also when lifting the demo unit, lift by the base to prevent damage to the feedback shaft and to avoid injury. And we will review the parts included in the demo unit. The KBMS series of frameless motors consist of two parts. First we have the stator assembly, which is the electromagnetic portion of the motor. Next is the rotor assembly, which is the permanent magnet portion of the motor. Please keep in mind that the magnets are fully charged. The stator adapter and stator clamp will hold the stator in place on the demo unit. Since the rotor is larger than the shaft on the demo unit, an adapter will be used. The adapter consists of the adapter and the clampering. The jack screw is supplied and provides a slow controlled method of sliding the rotor into place. Without it, the rotor would slide into position at an uncontrolled speed. It is also used to remove the rotor from the shaft by providing a mechanical advantage against the permanent magnet attractive forces. A toolkit is provided with an inventory list. In the kit are tools, various bolt sizes and mounting hardware, and a locking pin to hold the rotor into place during assembly. To mount the stator to the demo unit, a stator adapter will be used. On the stator adapter is a alignment hole, and on the shaft is an alignment hole. These two holes will be locked together using a locking pin. The adapter will be connected to the demo by four M6 by 25 bolts and will be tightened down by using a T-handled Allen wrench. Snug the bolts down when using the T-handle and do not over tighten the bolts. the bolts in place, use your fingers to tighten them down. Again, do not over tighten the bolts. Next, insert the locking pin and rotate the shaft until the pin falls into place. This will help when mounting the rotor assembly. The stator for the KBMS 35 is rather long. Care needs to be taken when inserting into the adapter. If it's started at an angle, the stator can bind in the adapter and will be very hard to remove. It should slide in easily with very little force. If it does not start well, realign it and begin again. 
slide it in until the stator bottoms out in the adapter. Mount the stator with the wires at the bottom to keep them clear from the shaft. Then place the locking ring over the stator. Three M6 by 65 bolts will be used to hold the locking ring in place. Remember to only finger tighten the bolts when using the T-handle Allen wrench. Coming from the motor stator are three sets of wires, the motor power, the hull effects, and the motor thermostat wires. The first step in mounting the rotor is to first mount the rotor onto the adapter. Since the rotor and magnet weights are very long, it is important to ensure the alignment of the rotor at the beginning to keep it from binding. If it does not start with ease, realign it. At no time should the rotor be forced onto the adapter. It should slide down smoothly. Next, mount the rotor clamp. For this, use four M6 by 20 bolts. The bolts will be inserted into the four holes that create the corners of a square. As with the other bolts, do not over tighten. With the rotor clamp securely in place, it is now time to thread the jack screw into the adapter. It should be screwed all the way down and then backed off. With the screw all the way down, it is time to back it off. It should be backed off approximately 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters. Ensure proper alignment when beginning the rotor onto the shaft. When sliding the adapter onto the shaft, it is important to keep an inward pressure on the rotor. This will prevent a gap from forming between the jack screw and the end of the shaft. At first, the screw will turn easy because there is very little attractive forces between the rotor and the stator laminations. When the field and laminations come into alignment, the attractive forces will increase and the pressure on the screw will become much harder. When the rotor becomes seated onto the shaft, the screw will once again turn with ease. With the locking pin in place, Four bolts will be inserted into the end of the adapter. Insert four M6 by 50 bolts into the four remaining holes that will create a cross pattern. Remember to finger tighten the bolts.
Put the bolts snug down tightly. Remove the locking pin. The rotor will turn freely. The mounting of the motor is now complete. It should be noted that after several hours of operation, you may want to go back and check your bolts and snug them down again.